Open babe, we're going. Woohoo! Area forbidden for caravans and outer caravans. So in case you're wondering what do we notice of the coronavirus outbreak in Portugal, the a fence over here, which means the campers on the camper spot they are allowed to stay and open the gate for groceries and come back. Uh, new ones are not allowed. Over there is a tent of people who arrived after the lockdown. They did sneak in in the middle of the night like thieves, endangering everybody. But that was because friends of the tent people were also on this spot. And they invited them. They said sneak in in the night, nobody will notice. People noticed. They're still here but now over there. and. It's kind of a shame because, yeah, you could say come over here, but it's endangering everybody because you don't know where the where the people have been, of course. But on the other hand, the friends that were on this spot just talked to them, bringing the disease or the virus possibly uh, onto the camper spot. So it, it it does create some friction with people. But yeah, what do you do? It's like a kindergarten or at the moment at the camper spot. It's not a united front, there's no communication. Some people think they're better than others because they know people in the village. Uh, there's all kind of little groups and everybody stays a bit in their own group. It's a bit of a shame because last year we were here the group was much nicer. But uh, yeah, we can still go out to groceries, we can still come back. Uh, there's water here, free electricity. Um, and some people think they're the boss of the place because they know people in the village. But that's, I think, how it goes. It's also at the other camper spot here. It's also locked down. I think you have to take the good with the bad. And um, so that's what we're doing. We do have some people we get along with. Uh, so it's nice to have some friends over here. Not everybody gets along. I suppose it's like that in an office. If you have colleagues at work, um, it's part of life, I think. Yeah, it's like, it's no kumbaya. Everybody hand in hand singing peace, loving chants. But. Uh, could have been worse. We're happy we stayed here. We uh, we've been told we can stay here by the, the by the locals. So it's uh, yeah, it's it's at the moment it's pretty good. Um, we don't have any symptoms. We did have a cold, Pedro and I, but uh, no other symptoms. And uh, when we had the cold, well, we just stayed away from uh, most people. And uh, yeah, that's basically a little, up, little update. So now I'm walking up to the camper spot. And yeah, as you see, it's not too bad. We're over there in the, in the corner. 
There's people in that corner, there's some people in that corner. So everybody is uh, happy-ish at the moment. So if things change, we'll let you know. We did go out for groceries uh, two days ago and it all went well. We just uh, went to the little, only thing we noticed was that people uh, are not allowed in all at once. Just one, one comes out, one goes in. There was enough stock, so I think the panic buying is subsiding. And uh, this is where we spend our days. We're already here before the virus outbreak, so not much changed. So we go around. Uh, campus but little areas. Back to Petra. Good morning, Baris. How are you? <laughs> oh, let me clean the lens there, Baris. Yes, Baris. It's uh, leaving Amexial. Yep, Baris. It's official. The Algarve government or council threw us out. So we're on the road again. Oh, yes. Another camper. Another motor home, but it's also leaving. No, they need. It's uh, yeah. Yesterday I was uh, showing you guys the fence. Yeah. And then we got a message that the mayor would come to the spot. Yep. Yeah. And the mayor brought bad news. They said uh, you get three days to leave. Yeah. Because it was not his choice, but yeah. he says uh, policy uh, dictates we have to go. Yep. Yeah. And uh, that's why we're on the road today. Yes. Yeah. It's uh, it's sad. It because is. we had to say goodbye to our dear buddies, Paul and Jean. Yeah. Mm. Yes. We were a bit emotional about it. A bit, yes. We uh, were fighting back our tears. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Just like last year when Just we like had to leave uh, Ember. Yeah. And uh, we'll see each other on the road again. Yeah. Paul, uh, mm. Paul has been very helpful. He prepared basically made our van roadworthy from, from not starting to roadworthy yes. yes we can't we can never thank him enough for that no we cannot but we also became uh, very close friends yep and uh, it's uh, mm -hmm. it's hard to leave them behind we yeah. hadn't expected that we had to leave we were looking no. forward like not so soon yeah. Being uh, quarantined, quarantined in. <coughs> Oops. In a <laughs> yeah. But uh, there is kind of a risk in them sending us away because now we are exposed to. Yeah. We have to drive to areas where yeah. the virus, the coronavirus, is more present. We have to go through the infected countries. So. Yeah. They. Uh, yeah. They told us that uh, we should still be able to cross the borders. Yeah. Because. Um, they'll, if you say, well, I'm returning to my country, mm -hmm. there are special documents for Spain and France. Yep. Uh, we don't have the printer anymore, so no, we, we not wrote them actually. down with our ha handwritten. handwritten. Yeah. And we have them on our phone digitally, so we at least have something to show. Yeah. But. Exactly. Uh, we we'll hope it will be enough. Yep. And we, they advise you to basically park near petrol stations if you have to sleep. Because yep. most of the sites are closed or in lockdown, meaning mm -hmm. they don't let new people in. No. Nope. So we just have to take the shortest route home, which is uh, 26 hours of driving. Yeah. And. Um, yeah. It's uh, it's uh, yeah. It 
will take us a while. We have to fuel up a, a few times. Yep. Luckily, we still have money yeah. for the refuelings, but once we've done that, we basically run out of our budget. <laughs> yeah. uh, with all the extra uh, food that we had to buy and, yeah. uh, and the work that we had, it's, it's suffering as well. We are in negotiations for uh, voiceover work. Yeah. But uh, that was when we still had electricity and yeah. solar panels. Now we're going back to the colder countries. Mm. And uh, we might not have access to electricity or it might be too cold for... Yeah, we have to see. I mean, a lot of uncertainties. Yep, indeed. But it's, uh, yeah, the heavy heart that we left our buddies behind. Yeah. Uh, it was... Hardest thing we had to do, I think. Yeah. But it's good if you leave fast. They they're still packing up at the moment. Yeah. They still have to dump the tanks. Oh. This is a distraction. If you pause, yeah, they say, say parting is such sweet sorrow. Yeah. And it is. Yeah. In the Netherlands, not not really anything is waiting for us at no. the moment. No. Not at all. Uh, besides unlimited internet. Yes. That's only an upside. <laughs> That's the only upside. So we'll uh, keep, keep you updated and uh, keep you updated. Yeah, we'll check back in.
but yeah, it is what it is. to Spain but it's very exciting getting nervous We got through the checkpoint and we got this little piece of paper to allow us to travel through Spain.
out besides the drag cabin and the trucks. Yeah. True. And we of course get the van. in Spain. Over there is the swimming pool which is closed. And over here is a pizza restaurant. And over there is the Repsol fuel station. And we were just at the Sepsa. Uh, but there was also a truck stop and they don't want to be boxed in by the trucks. They were already boxing in people. And now we're a bit out of the way of the trucks. Hopefully it's allowed. We're not the only ones here. There's another French motorhome where he said he was... Uh, oh, he talked German. Oh. But there's an F on the license plate. He said Ooh. he's been driven out of Portugal too today. Mm. And so are we. So mm. we're gonna call it tonight and see if we can stay here. And otherwise, we'll move on again. Yeah. Well, it's uh, <laughs> smoking. 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 All over the place. Yeah. It's worse than it was. Yeah. But it is with the cold engine. Oh, of course. Well, it keeps people away, which is supposed good now, but the smoke is going all over the road. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good morning, buddies. We're on the road again, through Spain. Yes, it's an empty highway.
And we didn't fine tune anything yet, so. Okay, I think we uh, need to go and roll some the system. Oof. Goodies. Wow. Oh, I think we take the plane back. Sizzling. Oh, yes, it is. It might be the end of fan life right here. Yeah. Right now. Oh, the battery is all wet. Mm. Battery is cooked. Yeah. I just noticed all the, all the coolant is missing. So if we just let it cool off, yeah. put coolant in, and see if it starts. Well, that's a bummer. Patrick has gone to uh, look for the number on the little, uh, yeah, at where we're at. Ah, Patrick is coming back. I hope he found it. Mm -hmm. Did you find it? A bell. Oh, yes. Luckily there's not much traffic. No. <laughs> I couldn't see a number, but it says Beja West. West. Mm -hmm. I see that Rodrigo. Yes. That's where, where we're at. Yes. So that's what we can tell the peeps. Yes. So it's cooking. Yeah. Big time. Moment. Indeed. We need to. Uh, whew, let it cool off. See if the coolant will stay in. Stay in. Yeah. If you can get it to start, because I think it might have fried the battery. Yes. But if anything is, we find a knife on our van, and yeah. there was. A lot of tension on the camper spots. Yes. So you never know if somebody cut something. <coughs> there were some undesirables at the camper spot. Mm. So before we call outside assistance, we'll just try to refill the coolant. Mm. Yes. At least. Yes. Yeah, I don't know how long we have to wait for that, but. No. Uh, could be the end of fan life. Yes. Let's see. It still feels hot. Yeah, so I guess it's not uh, ready yet. Hmm. It's not ready yet to fill it. No. I filled up the coolant, but the the coolant is gone out. Try to start it. Yep. It doesn't start. So the cold roadside is yeah. See what happens. Mm. Yes. It is. So yeah. Mm. Uh, 
uh, goede dag. Wij zijn uh, gestrand met onze camper in, uh, in Spanje. En uh, het ziet er maar uit dat we niet meer verder kunnen. Het plan was om vandaag zeg maar tot aan Frankrijk te rijden en dan door Frankrijk heen, dus binnen twee of drie dagen terug in Nederland te zijn. Maar dat... ja. Ja, oké. Okay. Kom zo snel mogelijk iemand bij. Uh, uh, en u zei nog iets over, over de cabine, zei u nog iets? Dat, uh... Nou, normaal gesproken, als mensen afgesleept worden, dan gaan we bij de transporteur in de cabine. Oh, zo. Ah, dus dan moeten we misschien... Dus, uh, nee, maar we gaan de taxi, dan een taxi regelen. Oké. Okay. Dus we gaan het ene nog een ongeluid, u krijgt dan ook informatie over. Oké, okay, prima. Dag. Oh boy. Oh boy, niet. Yes. So. Yes. Uh, they're gonna send somebody over. It uh, will be a tow truck. But because of the coronavirus, you're not allowed to sit next to the driver of the tow truck. No, of course. So they're gonna send a cab mm. to pick us up. So while we're waiting for the tow truck. Yes. We are making an emergency backpack. Oh. <laughs> I'm getting some extra clothing because we might not be able to get the van back to the Netherlands cost-wise. It has to go from Spain to France to Belgium mm. and with coronavirus we might have to abandon the van for a while. So we're making like bug out bags. Nice. Let's see uh, Take it from there. Yeah. Bye bye, show panel. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. We did our best to get the van in perfect order. Yeah. We uh, went to the garage, the tire place. We had our buddy Paul help us. Yeah. But uh, he said it's called, they call it Sot's Law. And then you break down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. A uh, road worker came and he put up a uh, some cones yes. and then uh, a sign Many over people. there. Yeah. And the Spanish roadside assistants called us asking the length of the van and the height of the van. And they'll send a taxi because the tow truck doesn't bring us. But then I suppose we have to tell the taxi to just follow the tow truck. Yeah. So we think this might be the end of our van, van life. Yeah. It will depend if the costs to tow it back to the Netherlands is worth the value of the van. If mm. it's not, they won't tow it back even, I think. No. But we just assume the worst now, so it can only get better if they, man, they would manage to fix it. Maybe the overheating is not too bad, but the engine was pretty cooked. But maybe it will be alright. So we'll see. Oké, okay. oh zo, dat zie je zo aan de sleepbaan aan het rijden.
So because uh, they lifted the camper van pretty high up the tow truck, everything fell out, shifted, groceries on the floor. Uh -huh. It's uh, yeah, we're cleaning it up again, but it's just uh, what it is. Yeah. So we're at the Peugeot shop and we have to wait until 3.30 because of the coronavirus and the siesta time is still 3 we might be here for a while we had a cab ride it was 90 kilometers yeah. but after a few minutes he stopped and he said your roadside assistance only covers 10 kilometers yeah. So he wouldn't drive any further, so he contacted his firm, which contacted was at assistance. Mm. And because the nearby garages are all closed, yeah. so then he said, um, yeah, it's approved, I can take you the rest of the way. It would have been a long hike, 90 kilometers to here. It was uh, through the middle of nowhere land, nomads land. Yeah. It was an uh, hour and a half driving. And the, the roadside assistance truck uh, waited until, until the taxi arrived. Because he only told us like Garage Rodrigo, but that was the name of the place. Yes. Cuidad Rodrigo is the name of the place. And it's the Peugeot dealer in Cuidad Rodrigo. So now we have to wait until 3.30 yeah. and uh, enjoy our last moments with Penelope, yeah, I guess the so. second. Yes, well, it's quite nice why that lives. Hey, we're sitting inside our camper van. Yes, we are. For the last time. Well, probably. Oh, yes. So. So the garage uh, gave us electricity, the roadside assistance uh, arranged for the garage to give us electricity and our roadside assistance was also arranged Penelope to going to be demolished here in Spain mm. or they, maybe they're gonna use it's a Peugeot dealer they might use it for parts it got new tires, got a new distribution belt, got new filters. It's the tires are like brand new, never hard, hardly driven in. Mm -hmm. It's got a brand new solar panel and our goal zero on board. It's all things we cannot take with us on the plane. No. Because we're gonna have to find a plane, a range plane back to the Netherlands and have to arrange transport to the airport. It's gonna cost us a lot of uh, euros, 300 euro per person because we have to um, apply for special help. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest assistant says it's not worth anymore towing the van back to the Netherlands, the costs of that. And then when arriving in the Netherlands, you still have to put in another engine because this one blew up. Mm 
So it's uh, it's end of the story. It's kind of a shame. The first time we put all our money that we earned, our hard earnings, into improving the van, we said, well, we're sure we're going to get back to the Netherlands with this van. Hmm. But then, yeah, the engine blows up. We noticed when we're going uphill, it only went 50 kilometers an hour and 40 and 30. And, hmm. and every gear I put it, uh, to put it pedal to the metal, that's hmm. probably what blew up the engine and it being uh, bone dry but the temperature gauge never moved an inch no. so otherwise I noticed overheating but uh, when the smoke was coming out I noticed of course mm -hmm. and I said to paint well, it's, this is not good mm. we're still processing everything Yes. Kind of a roller coaster. Not yes. when we wake up. Not did not expect all this to happen. <laughs> no, you don't. We're still in uh, Ciudad Rodrigo at the Peugeot dealer here, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we made a lot of uh, phone calls and uh, a lot of thinking. So I'll give you guys an update. Unfortunately, the, the engine blew up yesterday. So we called up the roadside assistance and asked him to translate for us to the Spanish mechanic because he looked at it for 30 seconds and then he said engine blew up uh, he didn't say what is broken he didn't say like the head gasket is blown or the cylinders have melted it, I mean it, so we asked if uh, they could ask him to relay a bit more information about what is ex what happened or what is broken because, but on the other hand, they have the power. But there's no, we cannot go for a second opinion. This was the only garage open in like a two hour radius. We, a roadside assistance told us if we had had a credit card, they could arrange a rental car for us to drive back to the Netherlands, fitting in more equipment like uh, solar panels and the batteries, and the basics, what we need to bring. Um, they said we can't do that you don't have a credit card I said can't you make an exception it's extraordinary circumstances they say well you did not uh, get the full package including transport back to the Netherlands and uh, that's true I mean you can buy multiple levels of subscription with roadside assistance in the Netherlands and I didn't bring the rental car option I didn't take that one because it said you need a credit card. I thought, well, both me and Pedro don't have one. So we're probably not going to make use of a rental car. Uh, we're just going to get our van fixed. May, if the engine doesn't blow up, <laughs> everything else is repairable. But yeah, of course, engine blows up. Yeah. Allegedly. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you would think, because all they have to do is say, will upgrade you to the highest subscription level you pay the difference afterwards because of the coronavirus uh, your life is in danger in Spain because the outbreak is heavy in Spain uh, that's more important to us to arrange you the rental car to bring you out but yeah the ANVB roadside assistance in the Netherlands just says well policy is a policy you don't have the right uh, uh, level of uh, of eight, uh, so for like twenty bucks difference, uh, we're not going to help you. If they wanted, they could send out a rental car. We could continue our journey and be home uh, in twenty hours. So they dropped the ball on us, and then I called Unife Insurances, which is in the Netherlands, and <coughs> I have a year-round travel insurance there together with Petra. In the year-round travel insurance it says if your camper van breaks down we'll arrange alternative transport like a rental car for you. So I thought okay let's try it with them. I rang them up this morning and they say uh, well you don't have the, 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 the breakdown help for your car uh, in our package. I said, yeah, but I do have a year-round travel insurance, which says, if your camper breaks down, we'll send out a rental car. They say, yeah, but we only send a rental car if you get our car 
uh, roadside assistance. I said, yeah, but I already have that with the A and V W B. Uh, yeah, so and it doesn't say you can. You're not going to get camper help with your all year round travel insurance unless you also take the car insurance out. Uh, but you do have a camper insurance with them, but not the the breakdown assistance with them. And now they say, well, if you don't have our breakdown assistance, we're gonna ignore the right that we gave you for a rental car, even though you have the travel year round insurance and then they hang up on us so yeah uh, we're gonna cancel all our UNIFE uh, insurances as soon as we can and we urge everybody else insured at UNIFE to do the same because I mean in a life-threatening crisis also they could help us out and chose to hang up on us and you have to be aware w what they're doing now putting us in much more danger as it would be in a rental car to drive back it's just me and Petra and the car versus going into taxis, going into airports, going to hotels going uh -huh. so and we could bring more stuff and I asked both the AMVW and Unive how about our luggage our luggage is insured against theft but it's not insured if we leave it behind willingly they did say make pictures of the things you have and we'll see what we can do but basically said your chances are slim so we uh, yesterday we registered on the website for help for people who cannot because we went to the to the travel uh, the airplane websites of the Spanish airplane uh, companies to see if we can book a flight ourselves and they don't allow it so we had to go to the embassy uh, foreign affairs and they have a special uh, site where you can register saying I'm stuck abroad please help uh, get us back into an airplane somehow and uh, they say it can take up to three days or more could be more before we can con uh, they can contact us with more information about possibilities so until then we're stuck at the garage but we don't know if the garage allows us to stay only for one night or more so we're still cleaning your house yes meanwhile we had some bad news the, the garage wants us gone wants us not to stay in the camp we asked uh, if we could stay longer in the camper van until we get a message about our trip back and the garage says no but we w you can't stay in the camper van we want to offer you an apartment for 60 euros per night for as long as it takes uh, and so they're trying to profit even more from us because they probably think we're rich uh, Dutch people mm -hmm. uh, if I said uh, oh yeah I mean that we can't afford that I mean that will bankrupt us in a week yeah. it's uh, they say yeah the hotels are closed and the, uh, everything is closed yeah. uh, but we're fine here in the van so I said well we don't have to be in an apartment no. we just if we can stay here and use the electricity and they said no once you uh, out of there uh, in his apartment or some uh, some friends of the mechanic so he thinks making us a good offer mm -hmm. but yeah he's already getting all the parts of the van for free which yeah. he can sell and so also wants us to pay more on to that make a profit out of an emergency situation and uh, if he had said like you can stay at my house or I can arrange an apartment for you to stay at for a few days but it wasn't necessary, so I told, uh, I, I, we asked, like, can we stay at least for the weekend? And yeah. you were not too happy about that either. Um, uh, so, yeah, I mean, we have to push the van manually to the next street or so? I don't know. And I mean, that's creates kind of a bad situation for us here and um, 
We now we are the undesirables that they don't want. Yes. Um, uh, we did ask for more information about what happened, and he said probably during driving your water hose got loose or damaged or broke or and uh, the water leaked out, uh, the coolant leaked out, the engine overheated to the point that they would have to take apart the whole engine to see like what's the uh, how is how is everything uh, is everything still good are the cylinders molten uh, is the head gasket good uh, all the things I mean is what's what's good what's not and that is not viable financially for us if they would have to do that unless we pay one want them to do that mm -hmm. so and then we thought back about what we said yesterday we found a knife on our van uh, our buddy Paul found it he said hey what's this doing here and, um, so uh, there is a, r a real option that somebody cut our water hose mm -hmm. uh, in the night because there were some undesirables on the camper spot there was some arguing going on um, uh, some people who did not like our side of the camper spot and we didn't like their side of the camper spot so there was a lot uh, actually the day before there was a big fight um, the day before we found the knife somebody was uh, going crazy uh, insulting uh, us and uh, name calling us and our buddies uh, so um, there's a real chance that our uh, hose has been uh, cut sabotaged and uh, we can't ignore what happened because there were tensions we had a friend called Pierre and Pierre came to visit us and those those peeps they drove Pierre out they said you can't stay here we're the boss of the place we decide who comes and leaves so I went over there and tried to yeah, calm the situation, but uh, they've been nasty. They've been nasty to our friends because they're jealous about of their motorhome. They've been nasty with us because they said, well, if you come here so long, why do you never go eat in the restaurant? And we said, well, because we're vegan and the restaurant only serves meat. Yeah. So they were upset with us about that. And then they were upset about who we were friends with. and. So there was a weird situation going on, and it all escalated, of course, in the the day that uh, the mayor came to tell everybody to leave. Mm. Um, uh, where there was a lot of name calling. Um, some guy, uh, one of the culprits, um, uh, his dog was peeing on all the camper camper vans, uh, tires, and peeing on uh, motorcycles and. And he just didn't take care of his dog. He uh, was inside the van, uh, the van and his boyfriend um, was bull playing bulls all the day. So we didn't like the dog peeing on uh, our new van tires and our buddies didn't like them peeing on a motorcycle. So we told uh, him about it and he freaked out and uh, went berserk and mm -hmm. as you know it the next day we find a knife on our van. The, yeah, we should think about if we ever get another van installing some security so we can watch back the footage so we have any idea of what happens in the night mm -hmm. uh, around our van. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a chance that it was sabotaged. Mm -hmm. So it's, there's a lot of ifs again. So a lot of worryings at the moment. Um, We've been shifting through our stuff, uh, put some more things we want to bring in the backpacks. Uh, so we'll have to see, we'll keep you guys posted, but this is kind of the update uh, as it is. Uh, hello buddies, <laughs> it's now the weekend in uh, Spain. And uh, we were allowed to still stay at the garage for the weekend at least. And then on Monday we have to negotiate new terms. So, uh, what we'll see. We'll take it one step at a time. <laughs> yes, we're rolling. All right. <coughs> yes, today is uh, Saturday, the 28th of March. Correct. Yes. <laughs> uh, 
then um, yes we are doing this uh, call out for your help if anybody is uh, yeah uh, driving towards the Netherlands and gets near uh, Salamanca in Spain then you're in luck <laughs> or bad luck <laughs> depends uh, if you can pick us up just us and our two backpacks yep. and bring us uh, with you uh, towards the Netherlands that would be hugely appreciated yep. and in exchange we'll pay for the fuel uh, for the rest of the journey as a thank you yes as a that's our best option if we can catch a ride with somebody who is now leaving either Portugal or leaving Spain. Mm -hmm. uh, mail us. Yeah, you can mail us at avalicious at gmail.com or mm -hmm. just leave a message in the comments below the video. Mm -hmm. uh, the email address is also in the link in the description. We can give you exact details where we are. It's very easy to find. Uh, you just put in three words in Google Maps uh, mm -hmm. navigation and you'll find us. Yep. And we are we're ready to go. We got our bags packed behind Pedro. See, the bags. Yep. Baggies. Uh, uh, the van will leave behind for this junkyard. Mm. Uh, we just want to get out of the the danger zone. Entry, yes. Uh, if you want to pick us up, it would be hugely appreciated. We'll pay for your <laughs> fuel and uh, yeah. you'll do us a huge service. So we'll be indebted to you forever. <laughs> yes. Um, so if that is possible please share this message mm -hmm. if you see it on Facebook or Twitter or social media mm -hmm. uh, because we're stuck here the garage wants us gone they want us to pay 60 euros for an apartment per day and we don't have that kind of cash uh, lying around no, they really. don't want us to stay in the motorhome uh, because they want to earn some money on us mm. so we don't feel welcome here uh, they hardly wanted to help us when we broke down uh, yep. they didn't do any attempt to look at the engine fix the van they just said engine is done for yep. but they didn't really investigate if they could fix it at all no. and it's because really all the other garages are closed our only option is now to yeah. leave the van behind it's weird and um, and and get us ourselves to safety mm -hmm. so we got we packed everything we need the essentials in our backpacks we think we need yes mm -hmm. so if somebody is there out there willing to give us a ride uh, we'll be pleasant company <laughs> for the long 20 hours drive back to the Netherlands so we'll pay for all your fuel Yep. If you pick us up, uh, yeah. we're mm, drop us off in the Netherlands. Yes. So it's today. It's now 11:45, mm -hmm. um, and we'll probably be in the same place for a few oh, more days. A few more days. Sure. So even if you if you see this video, not today, but after a few days, and coming through, send us a message. We'll give you an update. Uh, that's uh, I think that's it yeah it's a long shot because he many cares. people might already be stuck themselves or have yeah probably arrangements yeah. but in case somebody is still passing through yeah let us know if you can pick us up yeah. and <laughs> hopefully our next video will be that we're sitting in the car driving as passengers back to the Netherlands hmm. otherwise we have no telling how long it will be no. we're on a like uh, we registered for a flight back to the Netherlands mm -hmm. uh, but it's mm -hmm. all still being organized there's no telling how long it will take and if it's nope. at all possible uh, uh, so we feel a bit uh, weird because the garage didn't say stay as long as you need no. they say we want that one is gone mm -hmm. so they're already doing uh, difficulties that we stay the weekend here mm -hmm. uh, so it's not uh, with all the stresses we have this is an extra stress that uh, they're not hospitable towards us they kind of left us to fend for us for them uh, huh, for ourselves 
mm. uh, didn't offer us water facilities, uh, didn't want to show us, uh, they, had, they just didn't want to be near us, didn't want to do dealings with us. And we understand it, I mean, no hard feelings. No. Uh, they might have all kinds of issues going on themselves. Mm. Um, so we just want to get out of here if anybody can bring us, mm. or if you just want to bring paid fire. Mm. <laughs> And leave me behind, that's fine too. Or the other way way. around. Yeah. Well, <laughs> no, it has to be a package deal, right? Yes. Yeah, that's yeah, that's agreed to. <laughs> I mean just in case somebody says, Well, I'm willing to bring you paint down, but not pet okay. No. Then the deal is over. It's a package deal. Package deal. So mm, thank you. Thank you. Mm, have a nice day. Mm.